Okay, good, good, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us for this BNC Club, the live from Morocco, but also Toulouse. Uh, and some members uh, are in London and some others are in Buenos Aires, Switzerland, and also in Portugal. So this is a very international production that we have here. We are live from the Montresor Art Foundation. That's a, it's a private found art foundation that has been created in 2009, uh, which is uh, 10 years ago by a private collector. And uh, uh, we have the chance to have here Estelle Guillet, who is the artistic director of the foundation and Otman uh, El Farsi, who is the communication manager, and they will both share with us uh, a, a full presentation of uh, uh, a, a portfolio, actually, of, uh, of, of the foundation, all its activity, uh, which is divided in three parts. They have an artist residency program, they have an exhibition space, uh, with a program of events, uh, and they have also off-site events. Uh, they have made partnership with the program 154 Art Fair from, uh, Fair from, uh, from Morocco, and they have, uh, they've had a really very important artist. Uh, so they are going to explain to us the, 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 how this whole uh, foundation, which is big uh, functions. And first of all, we're going to show a small video, uh, which is less than one minute, that presents the, 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 the overview of the foundation, where it is, the fabulous gardens of uh, Morocco. And then, uh, and then Estelle and Otmal are going to present their portfolio. So I'm going to be the one to first show this film, which is here. Ah, no, it's not grand. Voilà. J'espère qu'on voit. On ne voit pas. Pourquoi on ne voit pas? Hein? Je pense parce que les gens sont sur le bureau. Il est en bois qui n'est pas. Il est en double. Okay, I'm back with you. So we had a, we had a small a, a small film of the foundation. I think I will show it uh, at the end of the webinar. I will show it to everybody because uh, some of the members have joined in the meantime. Uh, and so uh, now that we have seen where it is, which is it's in the Palmeret, I think. Uh, no, it's not in the Palmeret. <laughs> it's in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> it's in the middle of nowhere, but you saw palm trees. Uh, and, uh, uh, and that's quite exotic as, uh, as it is. And so now uh, Estelle and Otman are going to present the foundation with, uh, with, a, with a portfolio of pictures. So you, I'm going to mute myself now for a minute. Well, thank you, anne -Pierre. Well, so hello everybody. My name uh, is Otman and we're here with Estelle uh, Gilly, our art director. Well, first I would like to thank uh, all of our friends that uh, joined this webinar and uh, especially uh, a huge thanks to the BNC Club for uh, allowing this, uh, this webinar. So the, the main idea is to, is to present the foundation, the artist residency, Jardin Rouge, and to give you some facts about, um, about the foundation, also to present the artists. Uh, just as mentioned by Anne-Pierre, there's uh, Tilt, who is uh, 
live actually from Toulouse and uh, Bense in his own studio, who will be sharing with you also. Uh, he's in his studio currently, which is located on the other part of the foundation. And um, so, yeah, so about uh, the foundation, if you allow me, I'll be airing a small portfolio in order to give you some images. So this is basically an aerial view of, uh, of the foundation where it's located. It's uh, basically 20 kilometers away from uh, Marrakesh in the road of Fes. So it's uh, basically uh, located in a 13 acres olive grove. Um, and uh, just as introduced by Anne-Pierre, so it was created in 2009 the, the artist residency, which is Jardin Rouge, was created in 2009 by, uh, it was basically a man's vision, a man's ambition to dedicate a whole site to creation, to artists, and to support uh, this creation. So Jardin Rouge basically is today eight studios. I think, perfect. Uh, so basically today the foundation is, uh, is eight studios allowing to welcome uh, painters, drawers, uh, sculptures, uh, and uh, photographs uh, also. Uh, the next image is basically our friend Tilt in his studio uh, in here in Jardin Rouge. Uh, so our, our aim would be to support creation and to support artists to also allow the diffusion of uh, this uh, creation with uh, times uh, of presentations of residency projects. So this is basically Jardin Rouge. This is a, a global view of the artist residence. And as I was saying, so presentations of uh, residencies project would happen in what we call the helmet room here in Jardin Rouge. Well, the helmet room for uh, obviously all the helmets that we can see in here. And basically, uh, we do host artists open, uh, open calls that we may diffuse in a cultural season. So applications will be received, they will be reviewed, and the artists will be selected. Or also, uh, the team, or in a more global view, uh, the Jardin Rouge can also uh, meet an artist in particular in order to collaborate. And which brings us also to the next important date in our story, which is 2016. And uh, it comes with uh, the creation of uh, the Montchester art space that we can see in here. So it's on the other part of, uh, of the foundation. So it's a, an exhibition space of uh, 1,100 meters square that would allow generally four exhibitions per cultural season. Uh, the, the collection of the foundation also will be uh, shown uh, during this time of the year, just like this image uh, that you are seeing right now. Uh, so basically 20 uh, exhibitions have been held since the creation of 2016. So these are our two actions uh, within the, the foundation. And as mentioned again by, by Anne-Pierre, so our, our third action would be the offsite aspect where we would uh, collaborate with the galleries, uh, local and international uh, partners in order to present exhibitions, uh, artists. Uh, this is an image of um, uh, last year's edition of Rose Beton initiated by Tilt, who is with us, uh, with a beautiful wall painting by the artist Rero. And the aim also is to provoke encounters, meetings, and to um, exchange ideas as we are, and we would like to, 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 to remain deeply rooted in the continent, uh, in Morocco also, and to provoke uh, these dialogues between uh, North, South, 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 and, uh, uh, and uh, all the dialogue aspect. Which brings us also to facing uh, the challenge of this year, I think, uh, 2020 has been very, very challenging. Um, so um, we have actually decided to maintain the exhibitions only on this part that you can, you can see here, so the helmet's room, um, and also to uh, 
to receive four art artists uh, instead of uh, eight, uh, actually. But also, it is the, the year that we decided to extend the Montresor Art Space project that you can see in here. So this is the big building that I was showing, and also other parts that will be uh, nearly constructed in order to be open to the public by next fall of uh, 2021. And if you allow me, I would stop sharing my screen. So um, Estelle uh, will be now talking to you about uh, the artists of the foundation. Yeah, hello, everybody. Uh, as uh, Rosman say, uh, the, the question of, uh, of the foundation uh, start with the, uh, the possibility to uh, support uh, creation with the, start with the residency. But uh, rapidly we saw, we, we see that we need also to, to support the, the diffusion uh, of, of the creation. Uh, the, the aim of the, of the foundation is uh, to be uh, considered like a platform. Uh, I mean, so we are not, we, are, we don't have a lineup like uh, uh, wants to defend African artists or conceptual artists, abstract artists. We want to uh, provoke the, the dialogue and, and to, to share also, to give the, the possibility uh, between different artists to, to, to share. First, we receive a lot of uh, young or emergent artists. Uh, for example, uh, last year we received uh, a photographer, she called uh, Muna Saboni, she sent an apply uh, with a project uh, called uh, Crossing uh, for her. Uh, she's, uh, she has a, a double nationality, uh, French and Moroccan, is to discover and uh, discover this country. She come here only during the, the summer. Uh, for her, we give the opportunity, the opportunity to uh, takes time to realize these projects. I Means it's more than two years. So what I want to say when artists come is not only one coming, we uh, help and talk about a, a project. So it, it, it's a long period of, uh, for realize this project. And at the end with, uh, with Muna Saboni, we, have, we offer the possibility to, to Muna to uh, exhibit uh, our work in the helmet room. We realize also collaboration with uh, with uh, with a gallery. Uh, so first, it's it's give the time to, to the creation. Uh, we have also we recite also Carla Busuti. She's from uh, South Africa. She lives in uh, in London now. Uh, she comes for the first time. Uh, she's a painter, so so she starts with the project of of painting. And when she arrived and uh, see the possibility maybe to, uh, dis to work on different medium, uh, she, we, we talk about a project of a sculpture. So it's not finished, finished, but we, we, we have the opportunity to present the, the sculpture this year, I suppose. Uh, we receive also, this, uh, this artist, this Moroccan artist called Mohamed Said Cher, he come for the first time, was two years ago. Uh, he come in the same time than a French artist called uh, Skunk Dog. And uh, during the, the residency, uh, arrived, he talked a lot. And uh, Mohamed said, he takes, a, he starts with a painting with the, um, with the image, we talk in a, in a, on the on web, and uh, he, he wants to have more detail. And uh, during a dinner, it's not a joke, uh, Skunk Dog say, hey guy, if you, if you want, I can be your model. And he starts something with Skunk Dog and start for uh, Mohamed Sarit Cher to have the opportunity to uh, to, uh, to pass a step with uh, his uh, creation. So that is the, the, first, uh, the first aim of the, of the foundation. The, the other one, it's like uh, 
tilt but you ha we have also a lot of uh, artists like him uh, we we base the, the support on a long-term relation i mean it's not only one uh, uh, one residency or one project uh, we recite this artist called Andrik uh, Bikers from uh, Germany and we start uh, a huge and international project with uh, with him. He start to, uh, to to Morocco about this project called Tracing Chris oh. <laughs> Tracing Morocco, uh, and uh, he realized painting mural, and we have also the opportunity to uh, produce uh, a book uh, to connect him uh, with the curator. Uh, curator for Cartier Foundation to edit and present in Paris in Art Curial uh, uh, Library the, the book. Uh, also, we, we, we work with, the, with this artist, she's called uh, Roxane Domas. Uh, she came for the first time five years ago. Uh, for her, it's also a question of how I manage my, my career means um, have the opportunity to, to meet uh, galleries, to have the opportunity to have more visibility with uh, his work. Uh, we work with uh, this gallerist, the French gallerist called uh, Dominique Fiat. Uh, she presents the, the artwork during Art Paris. So it's also that, it's the balance between creation and uh, and diffusion of, uh, of work. Uh, and we try also to have connection and link with the Biennale, with the institution. Uh, KUKA, for example, uh, starts uh, to come uh, six or seven years ago. Uh, three years ago, we had the opportunity to present uh, KUKA during the Biennale of Dakar and after uh, to realize an exhibition in the uh, Mohamed VI Museum in, uh, in Rabat. So it's really not only a question who, who have a space and have a possibility to, to create, it's uh, also the, um, the, the, the things to be helped with the uh, assistant uh, uh, people, with the team also have a question of uh, uh, maybe the possibility to present uh, his work in different parts of, uh, of, of the world now, but uh, different parts of... Uh, Qu'est-ce que je veux dire? <laughs> je sais plus. <laughs> Bref, on s'en fout. <laughs> uh, different parts... Uh, D different, uh, different, aspects. different aspects. And uh, for the last party, we have a, with, with this image, it's Tania Mouro. For me, it was really a, a gift. Uh, it's a, a huge, huge artist. Uh, we have the connection with her, with the Rero and, uh, and Tilt. And we invite her to come in, uh, in Morocco to talk about the possibility to collaborate. Uh, she come and when she arrives, she really wants to uh, realize something uh, and take, uh, realize something uh, with the link of the country. So I say, Tanya, go, go outside, outside the, the residency and maybe you find an inspiration. And when she come back and she say, Estelle, I saw amazing carpet. So I want to uh, work on, uh, on that. And uh, we present last, last year the, the exhibition uh, called Tate. Uh, front you saw the, the huge mural and on the floor, the, the different uh, carpet realized with the woman factory uh, in, uh, in Morocco. So it's also a question to uh, how the inspiration could be, who could evaluate with, the, with this aspect we are in Africa. And uh, it's really cool to see the, the, the dialogue between the artists and the, the, the different artists. And the last uh, uh, image of the portfolio, it's uh, for us an important uh, uh, program. Uh, 
start uh, four years ago. It's called Undiscipline. We each year we invite uh, between five or six uh, artists of uh, one country. Uh, start uh, with the um, with a part of residency. Artists come uh, between. It depends two or, or three months in residency in Morocco. Uh, and after we can uh, present the, 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 the artwork doing the 1.54 art fair. And uh, the thing is after to thinking about how we can move the exhibition, uh, create an itinerancy uh, exhibition. So since two years, uh, the, the exhibition move uh, in Rabat, in Bruxelles, and uh, this year in, in Paris. Uh, so we, we are young, we're still young. We, we grew up with the, with the artists, we, we grew up with the space. And uh, the, the thing is, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not like a family, it's, it's more like, uh, I don't know, it, you have uh, 20 person work here. So it's, Really, question of uh, human and how can human can share uh, the different uh, experience. Uh, I think I talk too much, so now I start to to tilt to talk and to lose. <laughs> uh, so, so that's that. That was very interesting. Uh, thank you, uh, Estelle, and uh, and uh, we will have uh, uh, some questions, but I think we'll go back to that at the end of the presentation. Uh, for the moment, we're going to go to, um, to the presentation of, uh, of Tilt, uh, who is an artist that has had a residency at uh, Montresor and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and that is going to share with us his, um, his, uh, his presentation. And I, uh, he will, he will uh, explain to us uh, he's been to Montreso and now he's back to Toulouse. So I don't know if it's because of the lockdown, but you, you, you will explain to us, uh, Tilt. And Hi, hello, everybody. Hi. You hear me? Yeah. Nice. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so sorry, I believe that uh, you, uh, you, 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 you come from the university. Well, the, the, your, your main activity is uh, graffiti. Gra yes. And, uh, and you, you're the, you've been the curator of Rose Beton Biennale yes. in Toulouse as well. Yeah. Uh, so it's also interesting to see that the foundation is, is open to different uh, way of expressions and that, uh, yes, and that you're in, uh, uh, in a different field in a way. <laughs> yes, exactly. And uh, thank you for uh, staying graffiti and not street art. So thank you very much. Um, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna start introducing myself, uh, um, telling you that, like Estelle said, um, telling you that, like Estelle said, uh, my, my connection, you that, like Estelle said, uh, you hear me? There, there's a kind of echo, right? Can you? Can you share your screen or not? I can share the screen, but yeah, do, you, do you, uh, I don't want to share uh, the screen right now. Okay, sorry. No, no, it's okay. Uh, I just want to, just starting talking about my um, experience with uh, Jardin Rouge and Montresor. So like, like Estelle said, it's not like a one, uh, one project place or it's not like a one residence place. And what is really important for me is that seven years ago, like, like she, she said, it's not a family, but for me, it became a family. So as an artist working uh, outside at night by himself and during the day in a studio, I think Jardin Rouge is really important for us to get the opportunity to, to meet other artists, but a crew as well, because like she said, there was like 20 people. So you, you can find a graphic designer, a photographer, a video guy like Estelle, that is for me, the most important part of the residence because that's the person I really share um, stuff with uh, compared to like a classic gallery where 
you you would maybe only talk about like art, but in a business way, Jardin Rouge is the total opposite. So I feel like the freedom every time I'm there. And I feel like that I like super interesting conversation with Estelle and Jean-Louis, who is the, the creator of the, of the space. So yeah, it's been seven years, I think. Uh, I'm going there and I think maybe I did 10 residences and maybe two or three shows and I was super lucky last year in December to have like a solo show in, a, in the foundation. Um, so uh, talking about my work because I don't have that much time, uh, like you said I come from graffiti and um, I'm still doing uh, lots of um, graffiti uh, in the streets and uh, um, but I'm, I'm working on a very complicated mission for us that is to try to connect this culture um, and not losing all the energy that uh, she got by showing works in a museum, in a foundation or in a gallery. So uh, my aim is um, to keep on uh, showing the energy and maybe the arrogance and the power of this dirty graffiti people usually doesn't like in, a, in another way and with another medium. And to be honest, one of the first time that I was able to show it uh, the most uh, sincerely, I think I was in Jardin Rouge when I start working totally differently because I was in another country, like lost in the middle of nowhere, like you saw. And, uh, and, and this idea of being able to maybe change the way you work in a new space, to me, is totally connected to Jardin Rouge. So um, I'm going to try to show you a couple of works to let you maybe more understand what I'm trying to do with my recent work. Um, so like you said, my, my work today is really um, trying to translate what you see here, that is dirty graffiti that can be seen when you take the train or that can be seen in abandoned places or that can be seen in the street and try to work on the base of that pure energy, those lines, those forms, those colors and how they are connected to like a real history. Because um, I noticed two things. Uh, if you talk about urban art, many of my contemporary partners they decided to move from the classic and basic and primitive form of graffiti, probably because they thought it couldn't be considered as art. Uh, in my opinion, uh, what we have, our singularity, is exactly this uh, dirty kind of art and those dirty marks. Uh, so most of them, they decided to go more figurative, more cinetic, more uh, constructivism. So they, they went to pick up like some uh, classic art forms and try to put their culture in that. Uh, at the opposite, I, I, I decide to focus on where I am coming from and trying to show um, this with new mediums and uh, new composition and, and how it can keep this energy. Uh, the other thing that I noticed is that people in the classic art world who decided to use spray or spray paint uh, like uh, Anne Sartung, René Lévy, uh, Christopher Wall, uh, Katharina Gross, of course. Um, I, I love those works, but the thing is that it makes only reference to a certain way to use paint and create paintings. So I am trying today to do the same kind of work, very humble. I, 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 maybe one day I, I will be close to Katharina Gross, but I don't think so. But, uh, but the thing is that showing maybe the same body of works, the same kind of works, but try to explain to the public and to the people how those forms and those images can be connected to stories and to a certain culture that maybe they don't know. So um, uh, one of the, the way I do that is I, I just reproduce on the wall behind me, or this, the, the, the picture you see here is in Jardin Rouge. I reproduce uh, real walls made of dry walls, like um, 
And I am painting this dirty graffiti that usually you see everywhere in the street, on the, on the, on the tracks, when you take the trains or abandoned places, like you said. And uh, I, I'm, I'm using that as the, as the base and as the, 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 the radical form of graffiti to, to, to use and decontextualize to put that in a different work. So after I've done those composition of dirty and super classic graffiti, I try to find composition and cut into those walls. Here you can see like the, the leftovers from some other series. But what is interesting for me is how this painting can translate the energy I think that is super powerful in the graffiti language. And after that, I do the composition. So this, those ones, they of course look like a little bit like Mondrian because I really want to have this dialogue between, between something super dirty like graffiti and how it can sometimes be really close to some art form everybody knows, even if it's from other decades uh, in the past. Uh, so I'm going uh, so, to... Uh, so, uh, you still hear me? No. Okay. Okay. Sorry about the, the, the crazy sound. Um, so here, for example, you can also see like some parts that are in the studio right now and that are only like a piece of there are piece of walls that are cutted that are also scratch because I, I, I want to also use I don't only paint on canvases I want to keep some like original materials so here you have like the texture of the wall that is important for me and then here you can see like a small series of those work, but coming with a composition. And for me, when I am working on that direction, I am not doing like a painter work. I am more doing like a composition and almost like a photographer work. But from those paintings, they're gonna become the, the, the primary material for my real paintings. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a couple of paintings now to let you understand. So here they are. So this is still the work, the composition work with um, drywall and still like only composition. But from that work, uh, I decided to change the scale of what I'm going to paint. And for example, all, all those works that I just show you, I, I'm going to make them like 10 times, 20 times big, bigger than reality. And I will come back later on that. And then this is what happened. So here you have like just a, for me, just a classic painting, but only used as a reference, uh, original um, marks and original um, uh, or, or yeah, original marks that have been left by people who are doing graffiti, except that with this kind of composition and with the fact that you are 10 times bigger or 20 times bigger than the reality, it became something else. It doesn't look like a simple uh, patchwork of graffiti. It looks like a giant painting. And so I really want to find like the real relation between those marks and how it can become a new way of painting. So people are always telling me that I am doing like abstract work and it's not abstract at all to me because it just comes from photographs and from original part of um, painting that already exists in the industry. So I can show you another work, which is exactly on the same. This piece is like two by three meters and the two red lines that you see are probably like 50 centimeters big, but in reality in the street, they are like one or two centimeters. 
So for me, the, the real painter job is starting as soon as I am changing the scale and working uh, from those pictures. Uh, so here is another uh, example of the, the, the fact that every time I go to Jardin Rouge, my work is changing. So uh, <laughs> what happened is like I spent maybe six years working on those marks left in the streets by people uh, doing graffiti, but not only doing graffiti, leaving their mark because I, on, on the work I show you, I also scratch the surface. Like sometimes you see on the, on the back of the door in the toilets or like, uh, you know, the, when people, they leave their marks on a, on a tree. So to, to shoot maybe just with two letters in a heart, uh, to, the, the, mar the marks left by human in the street and by graffiti artists. But after six years or seven years working on that, I realized and I start this um, series in, uh, in, in Morocco in December when I did the show at the foundation that also when people uh, from the city, they are trying to clean and to get rid of uh, those paintings. And when they do that very bad, uh, another kind of painting is, is coming. So all those five different parts, they are coming from pictures made in Paris uh, with graffiti on trucks, graffiti on gates, and graffiti on walls. And uh, as you can see on the fourth part, maybe like the, the blue one, uh, that almost could be like a, like a close-up uh, on a Marc Rothko painting, you know, or with those two different uh, squares. Uh, so some other work, like the one in the middle, that can be also like René Lévy, like a uh, work. So what make me like really enthusiastic about the future is like uh, today, I think that if I work on the marks left by people doing graffiti and people cleaning graffiti, I'm gonna come maybe to the same body of works. And I think it's super crazy, but at, uh, at the same time, it's really interesting. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Tilt. It's been very interesting to discover uh, all your portfolio and uh, the, the, the fabulous work. And to be honest, I think uh, that we may be it should be also the subject of a whole uh, webinar and also the distinction between uh, graffiti art and uh, and paintings like uh, uh, like you mentioned Kat Katarina Gross uh, for me it's a very very slow a very very small line uh, so uh, and it was the opportunity to discover your work which i personally found really amazing so uh, so I think we all want to, we will all want to know more. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, but we are, uh, I have to consider time running yeah. and, uh, and, uh, and there will be, uh, if we have time at the end, the question parts, uh, but that was a fantastic uh, presentation that thank I could you. share with the group after. Thank um, you very much. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm going, we're going to go uh, to uh, Ben's uh, Mar Margilaki, uh, who Ben Se, who is uh, one of the artists that's currently in the residence, uh, and uh, who is um, uh, actually uh, uh, from Hungarian origins and living in Portugal, but he's been in the residence for uh, I don't know how long. But you're going to to explain to us everything, Ben Ben Se. Sorry. Yes. Hello everyone and welcome to my studio space here at Montresor Art Foundation. Uh, so as NPR said, I'm a Hungarian sculptor. I'm actually now based in France and this is my second residency here in the foundation. Uh, first I came here in 2019 and I'm currently working on a new body of work that's going to be exhibited here in February. Um, behind me here, you can see the studio space this is one of the eight studios that the artists uh, are allocated to, to do their production. And for this occasion, I kind of curated a little sculpture park for uh, the presentation. And also for myself, it's very good to see the work all together. <laughs> uh, so this is a space that is a bit cut off from the rest of the foundation buildings. It's a, it's a bit more isolated um, and it gives, a lot of freedom and a lot of freedom of 
mind especially to be working um, and exploring new techniques, new forms, new materials. And this is exactly what I've been doing for the last three months. So if we come over here, this is one of the first sculptures I did for Montresor Art Foundation. Uh, the great thing about um, applying to this residency is that I managed to uh, create a project that is much more ambitious than what I could normally do in my studio. So the sculptures are much bigger in scale. Um, and my absolute favorite thing is that I get to work with two incredible Moroccan technicians here who, who are craftsmen themselves. They're extremely skilled. And we come up with creative solutions and technical solutions of how to realize sculptures like these. So if you come closer to the studio space here, the two series that I'm currently working on, they're, um, they're sculptures for both indoors and outdoors. And conceptually, I'm trying to explore this uh, limit space or space in between these two kinds of spaces. In, inside and outside, for me, it's not just uh, talking about like um, uh, architecturally which place we put these in, but also uh, conceptually comes from an internal expression that needs to surface. Uh, it, it shows on the skin of the body. Uh, so I consider these sculptures as a, as a journey of transitioning from something very internal into the external world. That's also why I love to place them in uh, spaces like these. So, uh, if I was uh, putting up this sculpture, I would always put it in a window or in a doorway uh, to, to keep it in this transitional space. So if you come over uh, into the studio, this is where all the real work happens. So it, it starts from uh, an intricate process of tying and gluing a sponge and layering it with layers and layers of resin, fiberglass, and uh, creating a, an outer shell uh, that in the end hardens the surface. Uh, so all of these sculptures, I basically start with the uh, uh, sponge that we use for beds and sofas. And this, uh, this one especially was created from a two meter by two meter sheet uh, for a bed, uh, which I folded, I tied, I use uh, uh, stitching and different methods to uh, create this form. Uh, the new series that you see in here is very organic. So the shape, the shapes are uh, starting from uh, this kind of material and they transition into a process of, uh, of layering with resin. Uh, the sponge, especially for me, is conceptually very important. Uh, I first started working with this uh, in Portugal. I found a lot of um, people uh, throwing furniture outside and leaving it abandoned. And for me, this, this sponge is a very, uh, uh, it's a metaphor. So it's kind of, I think of it as a, um, an object that really carries the traces of intimacy that uh, were once uh, taking place on it. Um, and if you think of an abandoned piece of furniture, especially, it's, it's almost like finding an abandoned piece of intimacy on the street. Uh, so what I'm trying to do through this process of, of tying the sponge and, and making it react in a, in a bodily way, what I'm trying to bring up is this uh, kind of corporeal body memory. And body memory actually is one of the most important ideas that I work with. Um, I, I think of it as a... a a kind of site from which we construct our sense of self. Um, and so you see a lot of um, maybe paradox or, or an interplay between softness and hardness. Uh, and for me, this is uh, a representation of, of how we position ourselves in society, uh, how we kind of have a very vulnerable core and we put up uh, layers and layers uh, that that harden this into an external shell. So in a way you can think of the sponge as the flesh of sculpture and the resin that covers it as the skin. So if I move over to this sculpture, this is going to be a wall piece. So it's uh, almost uh, two, it's two meters in height and three meters at length. 
And here you can see the middle part, which is still not uh, completely, uh, it didn't go through the process of transformation. It starts from uh, this kind of hardened sponge surface and reaches this uh, level of smoothness with the resin. So with this piece, uh, I'm going to talk more about uh, the ideas in the portfolio. So if NPR, you could give us a authorization to enter with the other device. That, that's done. Is it okay for you, Bensi? Yeah? So I'm here with my laptop, a bit of a technological transition. Uh, and I'm going to share with you a portfolio to see the two series that I developed in the last uh, year, actually, last two years, 2019 and 2020. Uh, so this first series for me talks about architecture. Um, I took um, places in Montresso where uh, there's opening in the architecture. So I, uh, this piece that you see here in the image, it's uh, referencing the archways. Um, I'm calling them uh, transitory bodies because I'm, I'm basically taking uh, spaces from architecture that the body only passes through. So archways, doorways, and windows. Um, and for me, this, this is a, a very interesting place to work from in terms of sculpture. Sculpture for me is always somewhere in between uh, the language of architecture and the language of the body. So it's, uh, it, it's not only um, an object, it's, uh, it's somehow an entity. It creates a presence in space very similar uh, to the way the body does. Uh, but in terms of its materiality, it's using uh, processes that we use uh, for constructing, uh, constructing rooms. So for example, this entire series um, I'm working with a Tadelac uh, style technique when I, where I'm uh, layering this resin over almost like creating a, a capsule or a room uh, which contains uh, these, these uh, bodily expressions. So the, the transition from uh, one, one space uh, to the next uh, is, is the, the main uh, theme of this, uh, um, this series. And uh, when I think of architecture and in these uh, the sculptures, is, uh, the sculptures reference to architecture, and I'm trying to think of it in a broad sense. So it's not just buildings. I'm thinking of uh, the construction of the human body. You can think of it as an, uh, a new kind of way of looking at anatomy, but also the architecture of the self. So uh, a psychological dimension, uh, the architecture of identity, and the social and political construction of selfhood. For me, these are really important uh, ideas that I'm trying to explore with this series, especially focusing on containment and uh, what is the real feeling of being contained within a body. So you can see a few uh, details here. The way I uh, tie uh, the sponge with ropes reveals these uh, little crevices um, that are almost anatomical, but not really. Um, and I introduce uh, movement uh, and a, a way of mannerism that is similar to uh, human behavior. So it's, uh, you could say it's kind of anthropomorphic, but it still say, stays in that uh, minimalist realm of, of uh, architectural construction. So here I selected some images of uh, me working. It's, uh, it's much nicer when you can visit a studio live because you can see these. Uh, uh, so I wanted to include these. Uh, this is what the artistic insanity looks like in real life. <laughs> and um, here you can see some images of uh, the process of layering the, the fibers and the resin over the sculptures. The second series that I'm currently developing is moving away from this uh, idea of a, an architectural container into uh, a freer space. Uh, so what I did with this uh, wall piece, for example, is, is to think of it um, in a very kind of surgical way as purely a skin. It's no longer the container of the body, it's only a layer of it. Um, so I, I cut this skin almost like a surgeon. And the fun fact here is that I did two years of medical school. So I'm, I'm, I suppose I have some fetish related to that. 
And <laughs> what it reveals is, is kind of like a wound in architecture. Um, so the insides that uh, are coming through this wound are much more organic. They're almost like intestines. Um, and with this work, my main question is, is uh, not just this kind of uh, psychological uh, constraint or, or this, this sense of, uh, of uh, all of us having to be within a body, but also uh, trying to locate where emotions really are in, in the body. Um, so for, for me, one of the most inspiring uh, things to read in relation to this was Foucault's uh, interview uh, entitled Utopian Bodies, uh, where he, he talks about the possibility of, uh, of a body being beyond itself and being beyond its limits of flesh and skin and bone. Um, and this is exactly what I'm trying to apply as a, a process of sculpting. Um, so the space between becomes this vulnerable inner fold that folds towards the outside world. Um, and it's much more expressive. It's much more soft in its expression. Um, and uh, in a way, uh, this body of work is a, a quest into finding a new poetic anatomy for the body. So this, uh, these images are also processed. Uh, usually I have to uh, start with these sheets. I fold them, uh, I glue them. Uh, I find placements for little anatomical references such as the, the navel. Um, I usually put a navel because uh, it's, it's kind of like a, a feminine point of origin to the world. And um, I consider myself a feminist. I think it's important to mention that. Um, and uh, it's also kind of playing with this idea of proportion. So you can see uh, a, a suggestion of legs, uh, a suggestion of uh, the pelvic region, you can see the, the belly. And, and I always try to place these in ways that are, are different from normal. Uh, so I'm not trying to replicate a body. I'm not trying to create a representation for any kind of body. I think sculpture has done that uh, extensively. And this is usually how we relate to it. We would say, that's a woman or that's a man. It's another uh, very uh, important point in my work that I try to uh, push towards a vision of the world where gender is no longer important. Uh, or no longer a decisive topic about uh, self-representation. So these bodies are ungendered, uh, they are organic, and they explore their potential in the world as utopian bodies who own their own self-expression. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, that's really uh, very interesting uh, what you are showing uh, to us, Bensi, and the, the pictures are fabulous as well. Uh, so you've been uh, for the residency. You've been here, like is it? It's uh, and that's al also to tell the, the the residency is a three month, right? Yeah. So so I first came in 2019 for uh, two and a half months, and now I'm back since October. Um, and I'm uh, reaching towards the, the last uh, half of my residency, so I'm going to be uh, uh, leaving in December. My exhibition will be up from February. Wow, so you're coming back in February. Uh, one of the comments is that uh, is, it, it looks very light, your sculptures. Are they light? Yeah, so this is one of the reasons I, I was uh, always looking for materials to uh, fill the inner parts of the sculptures. This is how I found uh, foam in the end. Uh, I, uh, it helps me uh, move the sculptures around myself. So a big sculpture would be around uh, from 30 to 50 kilos, uh, which is quite incredible. Because if you see uh, um, the black uh, sculpture that I, I showed by the entrance, for example, it's uh, more than two meters high. Uh, mm -hmm. So it makes it very easy to maneuver them um, and and it's also a kind of a more delicate uh, uh, kind of interaction. I think it's also part of the, the concept. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you so much. That's, that's, that's been a very, very uh, interesting uh, presentation and fantastic work, body of works. It seems that you've been here for a very long time and that you've produced so many pieces actually. <laughs> but uh, so, uh, so, uh, so uh, congratulations. Uh, we're going to go back to Estelle uh, and uh, to uh, 
to uh, to see yeah yeah uh, to see if uh, uh, to have a sort of a general questions for for you uh, is that um, is that uh, the, the how how is the how how do you choose the artist? Uh, do you have an artistic committee or uh, yes? Hello. 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 Can can everyone hear us? I mean. Oui. Okay. Oui. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yeah, okay. okay. Um, it depends what uh, what Otman say. For example, for, for some we we really uh, wants to uh, work with uh, some artists. Uh, uh, the, the, for example, with Rero, uh, I personally meet uh, him uh, during a, a biennale and uh, invite uh, him to come to uh, Jardin Rouge and uh, talk about uh, uh, what could be a, a collaboration. And for the other part, uh, since now three years, um, we um, uh, have free call during the, the cultural season. Uh, we receive a project. Uh, we are a sm small committee and we are free in the committee. Rim, <laughs> when she work here, work with me about uh, the, the selection. What we say, it's uh, the, 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 the link between uh, each artist is the question of the territory. Territory, it's uh, a large, a large work, a large world, uh, excuse me. So we, we can connect uh, different vision, different point of view. And the interest of the, of the foundation, it's really um, to, to connect uh, different uh, point of view and different vision of creation and and the exhibition that you are that are traveling they are traveling to you said to brussels and paris do you have like any partnership with any other institutions or not yeah the thing is uh, as we say we are really young because start uh, 10 years ago really with the uh, organization seven years ago so, you know, sometimes you have people who visit uh, the foundation and, uh, and after that we have the possibility of uh, a share uh, a program. Uh, it's the same with, uh, with the tilt, with the rose beton. We have this possibility to, uh, to work within uh, uh, during this biennale. So, we, the thing is, uh, it's, complicate to have a, a global vision now because you know we are like a child we uh, we start to work we start to work and we have the possibility of uh, of uh, real life of partnerships so for for indiscipline for example we receive uh, uh, the director of uh, the Hall of Bruxelles he, he visit us uh, during a discipline and, and after that he sent me an email and say, hey Estelle, can we maybe organize a, a showing group sale? So it's like that, you know. We are not an institution, we are not a gallery. We are, uh, we are a place with uh, artists and people, people live here and uh, we, ha we uh, take care about each opportunity we can have. All right, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Estelle. Thank you so much, uh, Tilt. So, thank you so much, Bensi. And I will share with the, with the group uh, some uh, more presentation of the, of the, of the documents if you, if you want. And, that, uh, and next time, so last, last year we came with a small group to, to Morocco for the 154 Art Fair, but I'm sure that we will come back and we'll come and see you uh, in, in, in the live world. <laughs> so thank you again, everybody, and uh, have a great evening to all, and uh, hope that we will uh, connect, connect very soon. Have thank, a, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.